Hi there and welcome to this short video clip describing performance gains from implementing clustered column store indexing in SQL Server 2014. Um, now if you happen to stumble upon this video somewhere on YouTube, um, please note that this presentation is actually a part of my blog post, um, which also includes other information on column store indexes. Um, so to find out more or um, simply to grab a copy of all SQL scripts from this demo, please head over to www.bicortex.com for all other info and files related to this video. Now, a word or two about the setup I've got running here. Um, it's a pretty crude way of doing it, but nevertheless, let's run this query. And as you can see, it's a Microsoft 8 OS on my trusty little laptop with one quite core CPU and 16 gigs of memory, physical memory at my disposal. Um, I'm also running SQL Server 2014 CTE2. Now, I understand this is nowhere near a typical enterprise deployment hardware um, where a production database would be running on, um, but given that the highest Amazon Web Services SQL Server version which can be provisioned um, at the time of making this recording is version um, 2012, which unfortunately does not include clustered column store indexing technology. Um, this is as good as it gets for me at the moment. Also, um, given that SQL Server 2014, again, at the time of making this recording, is not ready for general release, and that the final version may include a few tweaks and bug fixes, um, I will need to resort to CTE2, which can still somewhat underperform compared to its market-ready release when it eventually comes out. Okay, let's go back to SQL Management Studio, um, where I've put together a few scripts to outline column store indexes and what they're capable of. To begin, I'll create a sample database called csidx underscore db, which will house our database objects. The next thing I'm going to do is to create a bunch of tables, um, namely one fact table called fact sales, and two dimensions called dim event and dim date. Um, as you can see, this is sort of the standard relational data mart schema uh, without foreign keys, um, comprising of one fact table and corresponding dimensions. I have also created a directory on my C drive, which holds a few text files I'll be using to pump the data into my newly created tables. Um, as you can see, the directory is called csidx underscore demo underscore data and contains three text files, one with sales data in sales tab file and two additional dimensions data files called date 2008 pipe, um, which as the name suggests, um, pertains to date dimension and all events pipe file, which holds events data. Um, by the way, these files were originally a part of Ticket Data Mart Data, which is a sample um, data mart um, demonstrating Amazon's Redshift data warehouse deployment. If you've never heard of Amazon Redshift, I encourage you to take a look, or alternatively, you can re read the review on my blog. Um, of course, these files can be sourced from Amazon's public S3 bucket, um, but you can also download them from my SkyDrive folder uh, with the link provided on my blog post. Um, continuing on, I will be bulk inserting data from those files into the three tables and doing a simple row count check to pull out the number of records for further um, comparison with the record count after my fact table has been expanded. Um, next, I will be stretching out, so to speak, my original sales fact table by simply reinserting existing records multiple times. Um, in this scenario, I'll be doing it 15 times, each time doubling the amount of data. Uh, after query execution, uh, the final product will be my fact sales table holding over 123 million um, rows, which I think should be 
substantial enough to demonstrate cluster column store indexing capabilities. Finally, I will be doing another record count check to compare the initial fact table um, with the one that's um, which has already been expanded um, by the previous script. So let's go ahead and run all those now and I will pause the video as this will take a few minutes to execute. Okay, we're back and if you look at the create output, you will see that the initial size of the fact table um, in terms of the records count was 3,765. Whereas now I will be able to apply further queries to a much bigger data set as a fact sales fact table now holds over 123 million records. Um, before I start creating indexes to demonstrate the difference between column store indexes and standard B3 indexes, I would like to show you three very simple select queries I'll be using um, for this exercise. They all rely on straightforward aggregations with sums and groupings and combine all three tables which I talked about before. That is fact sales, fact table and two dimensions, dim event and dim date. Starting from the top in query one, I'll be summing quantity and commission and grouping by event name and calendar date. In query two, I'll be summing quantity in price also applying a couple of exists SQL statements and finally grouping by event name and calendar date. Query three on the other hand is a simple CTE with maximum, minimum, average and total price paid aggregated um, across the weekdays. And as you can see for all those queries I'll also be recording execution times in these sections underneath each query right here. On to the fun part now and let's start with creating some clustered indexes on our fact table and two dimensions. Mind you, to start with, these will be standard, typical, um, classic clustered B tree indexes, not column store indexes. As you can see here, I will be attempting to drop existing indexes if they're there and create a series of unique clustered indexes on all three tables with page compression enabled. Let's go ahead and run those and I will pause the video as this might take a few seconds to execute. We're back and now that we have a unique clustered index created on all tables, it's time to run each of the test queries individually to see what sort of performance we can get out of this configuration with only clustered B tree index on each of the three tables. We'll start with query number one, and I'll again pause the video as I'm waiting for the query execution to finish. Let's go ahead and run this now, and I'll be back when the results are displayed. Back again, and as you can see, query number one run for one minute and 33 seconds, and returned just over 200,000 records within that time. Also showing here, it took advantage of the class dead index on the fact table uh, with optimizer classifying it as the most expensive um, operation in this execution plan. Let's record those values like so. Um, one minute and 33 seconds equals to 93 seconds. And proceed to executing query two and three. Let's run query two as we did with our first test SQL statement and I'll pause the video resuming when the application has come back with the execution results. Back in the results pane and as you can see this time we have a clustered index scan on fact sales table which is responsible for around 37% of the entire query execution cost and hash match right here being the most expensive operation. Uh, the whole query run for 1 minute and 27 seconds with 918 records returned. So let's go ahead and record these values. That will be 87 seconds. And proceed with the final test script for this round. Query number 3. 
back again and our final query returned only seven records within one minute and 13 seconds so let's record these values as the final output like so that would be 73 seconds and proceed to making changes to our fact table by dropping class that index to bring it to its original state now that we have all the results and all the times recorded let's drop our unique class that index like so notice that i will only be keeping class that indexes on the dimensions table however our b tree class that index on the fact table will this time be replaced with a class that column store index as far as the actual syntax as you can see it's pretty straightforward um, it's a classic create class that index statement with the word column store added um, you will also notice that I will not be nominating any particular column as it was in the case with clustered B tree indexes um, storing data in the raw wise fashion as column store indexes encompass the entire table with all of its columns there's also a bunch of restrictions which apply to creating column store indexes um, for example, the inability to specify sorting direction using ascending or descending keywords or the fact that it cannot be created on views. Um, but those have been substantially elevated when compared to version 2012 where only non-clustered column store indexes were allowed. Also, probably the biggest shortcoming of this feature was removed in version 2014. That is the inability to update delete or insert into a table with column store index on it okay let's go ahead and run this create index statement to find out if this setup did in fact rendered any improvements um, to our execution tally i will pause the video for a short time as this index gets created okay we're back and hopefully with the clustered column store index created this will be the last time i will need to pause the video to wait for the results to return as before we will start our testing with query one so let's go ahead and kick it off and the results are back already you can see the enormous performance improvement we gained from column store index implementation here the query run for only five seconds and the output was literally instantaneous with over 200,000 records returned in no time compared to the previous setup looking at the query execution plan you can also see that column store index was used alongside class dead indexes on dim event and dim date tables let's record this number like so and go ahead and run query number two let's kick it off and this time it was a sub second execution not bad at all especially given that the same SQL code took 87 seconds to execute previously let's put it into our execution tally like so and finally let's run query number three and again that was a sub second execution with seven records returned in just under a second let's record this result and just quickly let's revise the performance gains we can achieve in sql server 2014 from implementing column store indexes starting from query one the initial execution time in seconds was 93 whereas in the second pass i was able to reduce that to just five seconds looking at query number two run that took 87 seconds when computed using b-tree indexes and less than a second with column store clustered index on the fact table and finally query number three again the numbers speak for themselves and we have a tremendous performance gain increase 73 seconds versus a sub second execution so right across the board huge execution times improvement and i'm sure you'll all agree uh, clustered column store index technology is what's shaping up to be a killer feature in 2014 SQL Server release. 
While I'm discussing column store indexing, I also want to quickly show you how effective compression has become when using this technology in version 2014. I will not be recreating indexes with different compression types enabled in this video as it's a little bit time consuming with this volume of data but what I've done here is a really rudimentary comparison on how much space you can save when data is stored as a column store index and what you can see here are the figures I pulled out from the output of SP underscore space used store procedure execution. This of course was run against my fact table and what you can notice here is that without any compression um, the size of my table was around 6 gigs with over 123 million records. Next I created clustered index on the cells ID column with row compression enabled which brought that figure down to around 3.8 gigs. When clustered index was dropped and recreated with page compression enabled that further reduced that number to 3.6 gigs. But the real difference, as you can tell, is when I implemented clustered column store index on the table with a whopping 86% change. This represents a massive difference and not only can it save you a considerable amount of space but also reduce query execution times as most of the database operations these days are IO bound. Um, if you do not plan on updating your tables that often, you can be even more radical and create column store index with an archive compression enabled, um, which as you can tell, yielded another 20% savings in the data storage department. So there you go. Not a terribly comprehensive, but pretty conclusive testing, which proves that clustered column store indexes a great addition to the battery features already included in SQL Server Database Engine, particularly when dealing with data warehouse like deployments and queries. Thanks for watching, and for more info, please check out my blog at www.bicortex.com, where you can find more details not only on column store indexes, but also on other data related topics.